You're listening to The Lindia Grant Show. Think on these things with Lindia Grant. Radio One listeners, it's good to be here with you this afternoon. Very breezy outside today. It feels like it's March. Wind was blowing so hard, I'm telling you. But it's good. It's good. It's good weather. Uh, I am so glad that you all joined us today. It's Black History Month, and there's so much been going on about critical race theory. I'm just happy to know that right here on the Lindia Grant Show on WYCB, we're going to talk about black history today. We're going to talk about black history. And uh, we're not thinking about no critical race theory. We're talking about the history of our people. So I'm so happy that I have the one and only, I'd love to say it like that, Sylvia Y. Cyrus, who is the executive director of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, that's the acronym ASALA, founded by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. And he is the man that started uh, black history. First it was a week, and then it turned into a month, and so it is what it is. And so today I have Sylvia Cyrus, and I have their new president. Uh, she's going to introduce him. His name is Dr. W. Marvin Dulaney. He's the newly elected Asala president. Uh, and I want to also say, before I say hi to them, to tell you that Dr. Julia Malvo is out sick today. Uh, hopefully she'll be back next week. But uh, So we're going to talk about black history this whole show. So hi, Sylvia. Hi, Lindia. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. We we don't have to uh, cut out nothing on here today. We can talk about <laughs> everything we need to say on the Lady Grant show here on WYCB. Now, we ain't playing none of that stuff. And and so, uh, Dr. Delaney, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm so happy. I, when I went to the Asala website and read your letter, I couldn't do a thing, but when I did my Washington Informer article, I said, he already got everything I need right here. So if you saw my <laughs> Washington Informer article, I credited you, but I was so pleased with what you had written. So I just I Thank said you. That, Thank the, you. The, the, the Washington Informer is widely distributed, 75,000 copies all over the place, plus online. Right. So. So your article is out there, and uh, Sylvia's going to tell everybody about you, but I wanted everybody to know that both of you all are going to be on with me today. So, Sylvia, I just wanted to set the show up now. I'm going to turn it over to Sylvia Y. Cyrus, the executive director, so she can start telling us about all of the Black History Month the activities they have going on. Well, thank you so much, Lindia. And Lindia uh, has been a great friend of this association and really just such a jewel for uh, this area in terms of supporting black history. Uh, and so it's it's our honor to be with you and the WYCB listeners today because it is Black History Month. And in ways that it is more important than ever, it seems like every year we say the theme is so important, you know, Black History Month is so important, and it just shows that as a community, we have got to focus on our history and use it to really accomplish the things that black people need to do to show the world that we have made a significant impact on world history. But I have to start uh, this segment, Lindia, talking about our newly elected uh, president, Dr. W. Marvin Delaney. Uh, mm -hmm. He is very humble, and what I'm going to say about him today is probably more than he would like me to say. But I will start by saying he is a life member of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. 
He is a great leader. Uh, he has been responsible for founding two branches, which is our, our, our uh, chapters of the association, one in Charleston, South Carolina, one in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And anyone who does anything with leadership knows that if you will start chapters and branches uh, wherever you go, that you have to be dedicated and committed and really have to be a people person, which Marvin, uh, Dr. Delaney, certainly is. Uh, Mm -hmm. Dr. Delaney is newly retired or semi-retired, as we'll say, but he's newly retired as the deputy uh, director and chief operating officer for the Dallas African American Museum, which, excuse me, last year, I believe, was named uh the the best museum in dallas uh he and a small team of people in dallas uh have kept that iconic museum going uh it it, through all its challenges i've had an opportunity to be there is really really fantastic and his uh background as being a retired history professor uh, it, it really comes into play in terms of how well that museum uh, has done and continues to do. He mm-hmm. has impacted students, um, you know, all across this nation, certainly from uh, a history standpoint. Uh, he has also run the Avery Research Center, which is located in, in at the College of Charleston, which has impacted a lot of people. Uh, he's done a lot of work relative to education. He has provided school districts with the history they need about our people so that our young people are informed and has written and published books and essays on our history. Uh, But I will just tell you that he is a man about the people. He is really going to be such an asset to our association. And so I am introducing to the listening audience for WYCB, our national president, and and Marvin, if you don't mind, Dr. Delaney, if you don't mind sharing with us the reason for the season, how did we get February to be Black History Month and what impact Dr. Woodson and the association have, has had on that? Well, as you know, uh, Dr. Woodson chose the second week in February to celebrate Negro History Week starting in uh, 1926. He chose the second week in February because... Uh, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln were both born in, in, during that second week in, in February. And, of course, he was also looking at the fact that February is a month that includes the birthdays of Langston Hughes, W.E.B. Du Bois. And so February is indeed a very important his, you know, important month in the African-American experience. And as you know, in 1976, during the final bicentennial, uh, Big World History Week became Black History Month. And, of course, what Asala has done is that, again, as the founders, basically, of Black History Month, is, you know, uh, promote Black history with themes. For example, in uh, 2020, we had African Americans in the vote. And that was very apropos because, indeed, that was the presidential election year. And we wanted to make sure that African Americans in particular got out to vote. And, of course, we've seen the results of that in terms of electing Joe Biden. Now, as we know, we're celebrating uh, black health and wellness this month. And, again, uh, it's apropos, again, in, in the sense that we're dealing with this COVID-19 virus. And, of course, African Americans are the population that are suffering disproportionately in terms of being infected with that, by, with that virus and also as, as being the ones who are dying the, the both from that virus. So uh, Asala has tried indeed to spread the study of African-American history and culture so that our people, as well as others, understand the importance and significance of the African-American experience in this country. Because beyond all others, and I'm, and I'm not trying to be one that says that our history is better than others, but beyond others in in the sense that we would need through slavery, through Reconstruction, through Jim Crow segregation, we have been the ones who pushed the whole notion of freedom and equality because it was so significant to us. And I hope I'm not being too long-winded. No, I think think you're fine. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think you're fine there. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Lindia, one of the things that I, I, I wanted to share is uh, Dr. Delaney has talked about how this year's theme, health and wellness, and one would naturally, as we start talking about, and as he mentioned, uh, the pandemic really shines a light on our theme. And one mm-hmm. might think that, oh, Asala just created this theme, you know, to address the pandemic. But we did not. Black health and wellness has been an issue but in the African American community prior to the pandemic, we yes, coined yes. the phrase that when the rest of the world catches a cold, black people catch pneumonia, get pneumonia. Mm-hmm. And so when we initially thought about this theme, we were talking about some of the same conditions that black people disproportionately have that have led to the fact that we were impacted and even died at a higher rate than other races. Our issues of obesity, heart disease, diabetes, uh, our um, immune uh, system uh, uh, challenges that we have, et cetera. And we want to shine a light on the fact that our health and wellness is in many ways, sometimes we can control that. We can control what we eat. We can control going to the doctor and having our checkup, you know, check, checking out your eyes and, and those kind of things that help you stay strong. Going to the dentist. You know, some people don't want to go to the dentist, but your oral health impacts your heart. So we really have to, as a community, embrace our medical conditions and do everything that we can to take care of ourselves. But the great thing about this theme, Lindia, is because we are not addressing just physical health, but in terms of health and wellness, we're talking about fiscal health as well. How are you managing your finances? Do you have a budget? You know, how are you managing the money that you have? Because when you have stressors like your budget and money and income, it's going to impact your physical health. And then the other piece of that is it also impacts your mental health. And we see that even through this pandemic, that we disproportionately are suffering from mental health issues by being isolated. Uh, Jobs have disappeared. You know that we uh, have a large number of our community that are in service industries and they have not been able to work or it's changed work so, so much. So we're focusing on all of these areas for the entire year. We say that we set the Black History theme of Black Health and Wellness For the year, we celebrate it with the world in February, but we talk about the theme in Black History 365 days a year. Amen. I love it. Uh, um, Everybody knows that I talk about diabetes quite a bit. Uh, I have it myself. When I was born, I weighed 13 pounds, which is the first clue. And uh, my mother, they say usually when a woman bring children in the world at heavy weights like that. My brother was 10 pounds and I was 13. So we didn't know. We were not educated. And that's why every week when I go off this radio show, I use the scripture, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And so this Mm -hmm. whole campaign that you have going here, Black Health and Wellness, is about educating people and making them understand not making them, because I, I always say making them, helping them to understand right, that, right. that how you live matters. And I also know from doing so much research on this, Dr. Delaney, that uh-huh. uh, a lot of things that cause us problems is a result of being enslaved and how we ate back yeah. then yeah. and how, uh, because you could eat like you wanted to at that time and go out in the fields and work it off, and it didn't bother you. Because I had a, uh-huh. a doctor from um, Johns Hopkins on my show, Dr. Sherita Hill Golden, and she was talking about it for Black History Month several years back. And I asked her, I said, was that true? She said, yes, we did grand rounds right here at Johns Hopkins. And, and white people didn't um, had diabetes back in the early days in slavery. Black people didn't because they were working in the fields and burning off all the calories. So we have to educate. My People Paris for the Lack of Knowledge is all about what you're taking in, but how much are you burning off? So I just want uh-huh. to say that's, 
that's why when my mother had both her legs amputated and she had kidney failure and she had a whole bunch of wow. stuff, mm. classic case of diabetes because nobody in my family knew. I have declared uh-huh. the rest of my life to tell people that they can make a difference. You can. I brought mine down from 15 down to 6. And so yeah, people don't right. always know that. I remember I was speaking somewhere, and then I'm going to give it back to Sylvia. I was speaking at a church, Matthew's Baptist Church in the Memorial Church on in Southeast on Martin Luther King, and it was a lot of African Americans there, and Mary Health was there, and I was the speaker to tell my mother's story. And there was a, a lady that was in tears, and we wanted to know why was she crying. She said, "Cause." I have diabetes and my number's up and I didn't know I could make it go down. And you give me so much hope just telling me by changing my diet and exercising and eating right. And, you know, so I, I'm I'm using this to make sure that you all pay attention to what they're saying. Now I'm through now. I just had to get that in because that's important to me. Well, well, Linda, we're we're glad that you're an inspiration. And while we're thinking of health, I certainly want to say to Dr. Malvo, I know you're listening. Please take care of yourself and and get well so you can come back to the show. We really are missing you uh, today because as we talk about Black History Month, you oh, she always is so insightful about it. And Dr. Malvo is also a member of Asala. One of the things that we want to talk about is the fact that ASALA is a membership organization, and Dr. Delaney is particularly passionate about that. So, Dr. Delaney, why should uh, the listeners here at WYCB, uh, Lindia Grant Show listeners, become members of the association? Well, you know, obviously, you know, we are the number one, the oldest African-American historical association in the country. And, of course, not only do we offer the the research uh, and the knowledge about the African-American experience in this country, we also uh, enable and allow people to get that knowledge by, by indeed, becoming members, uh, using the resources on our website, coming to our annual conference, and, of course, coming to the Black History Month Festival that's taking place this year. Uh, as As was said, you know, for the lack of knowledge, our people suffer. And so we are indeed the, the organization that can provide that knowledge to mm-hmm. stop some of the suffering that is hot happening in an Afri- African-American community. You know, I spent 14 years in Charleston, and one of the things, uh, one of the sort of mythology that existed there was that the Medical University of South Carolina, which was down in downtown Charleston, you know, allegedly kidnapped African-Americans, experiment on them, and then harvest their old organs and sell them. Again, that mythology indeed has some basis in fact, but it reflected the fact that African Americans had this suspicion and concern about dealing with the, the, the medical system in this country, which indeed impacted their health. So basically, I just want to repeat, we, we provide the knowledge to have, help African Americans to take care of themselves better, to understand where they have come from, and indeed to pass that information on to their children. You know, I'm always um, sort of impressed by what Jewish Americans do. They have a Saturday school in which they teach the, their young people about their history, of the problems that they've been through. Whereas we know, when we teach our history, there's this thing that nobody Dr. wants Delaney. to learn, not even some of us. Yes. Dr. Delaney, yes. please. Did you know that? And then you know you're talking about something that's touchy right now. Let's save it for the second half. We got to get ready to go to a commercial break. We're going to go to a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to continue to talk to Sylvia Y. Cyrus, the executive director of Asala, and Dr. W. Marvin Delaney, the newly elected president of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, known as ASALA, founded by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Back in a moment. Yeah. All right. If it wasn't for my care coach at Mary Health, I probably wouldn't be so healthy right now. As a man, you know we don't get checkups or see a doctor regularly anyways. It's probably just a man thing because none of my partners go either. We know we should, but we just don't and hope it works out. So what changed for you? A Mary Health assigned me a care coach. 
somebody that gives one-on-one help, answer questions, explain things, and help set my appointments. She also helped me understand what having high blood pressure really means and ways to manage it so it doesn't kill me. It ain't nothing to play with. If you're a member of MeraHealth, ask for a care coach. I'm glad I got mine. At AmeriHealth, if you need a care coach, you can have one. Just call us at 1-877-759-6224 to get connected. 1-877-759-6224. This program is funded in part by the government of the District of Columbia Department of Healthcare Finance, Mayor Muriel Bowser. This is Frank Smith with the African American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C., located at 1925 Vermont Avenue Northwest on the Green Line. Did you know that a recent study found that children who visit museums do better in school and in life than children who do not? So parents, teachers, and preachers, let's get moving. I promise you if you bring your children to the African American Civil War Museum, they will be inspired by the images that they see, they will be impressed by our living history reenactors who are always available, and they will be involved in our scavenger hunt that takes them throughout our exhibit. That's the African American Civil War Museum, 1925 Vermont Avenue. Our hours are 10 to 6.30 on weekdays, 12 to 4 on Saturdays and Sundays. See it. Be inspired. Washington and former religion columnist, Lyndia Grant. Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a segregated Montgomery bus. In lectures on brotherhood, Ms. Parks often said, People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired. But that wasn't true. I was not tired physically. I was not old. I was 42. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. Driven out of Montgomery by harassment and death threats, Detroit, Michigan became her new home. Rosa Parks will always be remembered as the mother of the civil rights movement. Raised in the AME church, she once said, I remember finding such comfort and peace while reading the Bible. Read more in the religion column of the Washington Informer, an award-winning African-American newspaper. We don't report crime or gossip, just positive news. Pick up the Washington Informer or visit us online at WashingtonInformer.com. Call 202-561-4100 for more information. All uh, right, we are back. Uh, we probably have about six or seven minutes. We went a little longer get, getting excited on, on the first half because Dr. Julian, when Dr. Julian Malvo is on here, I have a rhythm. And so today I just kind of got in, involved in this black health and wellness theme. But uh, but before I get back to what we were talking about, Dr. Delaney, I, I want Sylvie to tell us what, what we're not, are we having our luncheon? What's going to happen? Well, I'm glad that you asked, because while we are in this pandemic period, Uh Asala is hosting our second annual virtual festival, which has allowed us to have programming the entire month. We started out on the 1st of February talking about our theme and introducing everyone to Black History Month. We have a number of programs that are planned that are free and open to the public. We ask that your listeners go to our YouTube channel that we call Asala TV that can be accessed on our website. Be ready to write this down, www.asalh.org, www.asalh.org, where you will see on our website the tremendous programming that we have planned. Our programs span a a breadth of different things that will engage everyone. We have uh, panel sessions. We have book talks. uh, And what we have that's really interesting for this year is our theme, Black Bodies. And Black Bodies really has been... Lindy, I'm going to tell you, it it, it really has shaken a lot of people, as what uh, Dr. Delaney was talking about earlier. This Mm -hmm. is our premier event this year. Instead of the luncheon, we have two programs, one that took place last Saturday, the other that will take place on February the 27th. And for a small ticket price, you can attend these events. And if you missed it or if you want to watch it later, you will be available to see it on demand from March 1st to March 15th if you purchase the ticket. But the one that's going to, that's coming up on uh, February the 27th is called Black Bodies 
race norming in the NFL. And here we're going to talk about some contemporary issues about what has happened to our black athletes uh, in the NFL. As we know that we we send them out there to to make the money for the the owners and for the teams, but what that does to the bodies of our black men. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, you'll want to come and hear about that. But what I would like Dr. Delaney to share with us is the program that we had part one, which really just kind of blew us away, which was on uh, black bodies in medical science. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Henrietta Lacks, but some of the other issues. And Dr. Delaney, could you just share with us a little bit about what happened uh, or our program for Black Bodies One uh, that was really so interesting for for, uh, those individuals who watched it? Sure. Basically, it sort of documented and covered the experimentation that has been, that has been done on black bodies, uh, both in, during the times of slavery as well as in the, in, in, in the modern times. Uh, it went back, for example, and looked at what Marion Sims did when he experimented on African-American women, African-American slave women, in order to create what was called the, the field of gynecology. Then, of course, it, it looked at... Uh, the Tuskegee study, how indeed they allowed syphilis to spread in the Tuskegee, Alabama com- community in order to see the Im- impact of it. And then, as uh, Sylvia has pointed out, it, it looked at indeed at uh, the Henry L. Lacks cells, how the how doctors and researchers used her cells to indeed study cancer in polio and other um, diseases that affected all Americans. And so basically what uh, Black Bodies One did was sort of set the tone for how African-Americans have been exploited historically in terms of medicine and health care in, in, in this country. And part of, again, part of why I uh, alluded to what was happening with the Medical University of South Carolina was that, indeed, African-Americans were afraid to, to be out near the Medical University because they thought they would be captive, ca- captured and experimented on, and as I said, their their organs harvested and sold. Right. Well, I, I thank you for sharing that. And then, as you mentioned with Henrietta Lacks and Lindia, I did not realize this, but uh, Henrietta Lacks died in 1951, and her cells were so special to cancer research and other research that her cells were actually a part of coming up with the vaccine for COVID-19. And this was a black woman out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and But we have also, through all of those challenges, all has not been negative. You know, through this whole situation of our black health and wellness, we have created black hospitals. And we have black, mm-hmm. black doctors like Dr. Charles Drew and others uh, who have made fantastic medical, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, and my, my my words are leaving me, but discoveries that have really impacted right. modern medicine yes. in a positive way. So although we've uh-huh. had some challenges, we've had plenty of triumphs, and we want our young people to study science so that you too right. can be doctors uh, and scientists to help improve the health and wellness of our people. We want you to go to school and become lawyers and bankers so you can help our physical our phys, uh, financial wellness we want you to go to become psychologists and psychiatrists to help us uh, become uh, better mentally but we really want you to go to our website at www.asalh.org uh, there are plenty of programs there for you join the association and be a part of a great community that studies our history that loves our commu- our community and can share that information so that our young people will know in whose shadow they stand so that they can be all that they can be uh, to support our black history. And I want to tell the listeners when I was uh, helping to coordinate the luncheon, I was so excited to see buses rolling in Washington, DC down at the hotel by the convention center, uh, buses from all over, just uh, the chapters had, had sold tickets and So I just want you to know it is a lot of people that are members of this association. So if you would like to join, contact us all of it. Tell me I'm just about out of time now. But, Sylvia, thank you so much. And Dr. Marvin Delaney, 
go to the Asala website. That's A S as in Sam, A L H as in Harry dot O R G, and look at all the links. Sylvia, if you could give me a quick 10 seconds and, and Dr. Delaney 10 seconds so I can close out. Very good. I'm going to let Dr. Delaney go first and then I'll follow my president because he has been such an inspiration to our members since he's been elected. I got well, this is a shame, a shame. Yeah, this shameless plug. We're having a program tomorrow in which we're, we're uh, talking to healthcare professionals about uh, health and wellness in the eye of the storm in the African American community. And I will be moderating that program tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So go to www.aslh.org to sign on. I'm running out of time. Thank you. Uh, we just like to say we also support uh, HBCUs, and we want to shout out to Tony Roy and the HBCU National Choir, the 105 Voices of History. They are participating in all of our programs. Lift Every Voice and Sing is a part. In addition to the speeches, we have great music. You really want to pay it, come and participate. Bring your kids to the computer and show them what's happening with our history so all they right. can be proud. we got to go, Sylvia. Thank you so much. We thank you all for tuning in to the Lindy Grant Show. We'd like for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tune in next week. We're going to be live from Detroit, Michigan, talking about the new Lewis College of Business and Design. All right. We hope this show has been good for you. Words, thoughts, and deeds have a boomerang effect, so be careful what you send out. Scripture says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So think on these things from the Lenny Grant Show. I'm your host. Good day. Thank you for listening to the Lindia Grant Show. Think on these things with your host, Lindia Grant.